Okay, there's six cups total and a little cup for white highlights at the end. Um, I, I put the two blacks a little separated by themselves just so I know exactly where the gray starts. Um, you don't have to, you know, it's, it's just a habit I formed. But uh, the first cup is dimension black, the second cup is sculpting black, third cup is dark tone, fourth cup is medium tone, fifth cup is light tone, and the sixth cup is miracle water, um, which you can get through in tens. It doesn't come in my set. So you can get that separately. Um, if you find yourself without um, miracle water, um, you can use distilled water. You know, it works uh, really similar. So the dimension black I use usually just for the blackest blacks in the tattoo. Um, and then the sculpting black, I'll start using sculpting black before I start with the gray tones. If it's a really black area that's going to blend into a, a gray tone, that's where I start with the sculpting black. And then from there I move into the grays. So sometimes with a dimension black, if it's an area where I'm going to blend from a real black into gray tones, I may start with a dimension black, wisp it out and soften it up, and then I come in with a sculpting black over that and kind of bringing the sculpting black off the dimension black. And then from there I go into the light tones, so on and so on. All right, I'm about to start this Boris Karloff as Frankenstein's monster piece. A lot of people call, it, call him Frankenstein, but he's actually Dr. Frankenstein's creation. So he's Frankenstein's monster. His name isn't Frankenstein. Anyway, that's not important. So we're gonna do this Boris Karloff portrait from Frankenstein, the movie Frankenstein, classic, one of my favorites, came out in 1931, some useless trivia for you horror fans. Okay, since I'm left-handed, I'm going to start on the left side, just out of habit. I'm going to start from the bottom, because I try to work from the bottom, wipe away from the stencil so I don't wipe the stencil off as I'm working. If I started on top and I'm wiping, the stencil would wipe off pretty quick and I'd be screwed. So, uh, something Tom Renshaw taught me when I started doing portraits. So I'm going to start from the bottom, on the left side. I'm going to start working on the, his coat here. So I'm going to start, I'm going to jump in with my dark gray tone. And uh, of my grays, the dark gray is pretty dark. If you packed it in, it, it could almost be black. So the way I work, I do a lot more brushing than packing it in with circular motions. So um, I start right in, just kind of brushing it in. And then you can kind of ease it in and, and see how dark it's going to look without going in too dark right off the bat. But the gray tone is a really rich, dark gray, but it is really dark. So, the way I put it in, it's I'm kind of finessing it in. I'm not packing it in real hard. Which is really the way I do 90% of my tattoos. The only time I'm doing a circular oval hand motion is when I'm packing black. But all the gray stuff, I'm really brushing either back and forth, or I'm just, uh, I call it a backstroke where I'm just kind of one stroke at a time brushing it in. I'm using a 7 mag. I use um, a number 10 gauge. It's a bug pin type needle. So I put a 7 mag in a 5 mag tube. And I do the whole tattoo like this. I'll do the whole thing like that. Because I can get into tight little areas with it. I'll do 98% of the tattoo with this one needle. Um, I can get into tight areas and I can also do big areas and you know nice smooth shading throughout so it's a really really versatile needle. I started with 7 mags when I started and just kind of just stayed with them and got used to them.